All right, everyone. So today, I guess what we're going to do is uh, look at some of these uh, different battery testers that are out in the market. And we kind of want to get uh, the stuff that people already use so we can figure out what type of results we're getting and uh, try to make some sense with it. Um, we're going to be probably going to be focusing on the 280K and, and see what type of results we get. But we also did some testing with the 304, and we're just going to briefly mention that. There's actually a full video of a test that we did on 304, and I'll link that um, in the description below. But um, what we want to do is see, well... Uh, using the same cell, what kind of results do we get from one of these uh, common, you know, fan heater type things to like something like the ZKE EBC40? And we got a cell that, uh, you know, it's a 280K that we're going to focus on. And we're going to find some interesting things about the cell chemistry itself. I think the 280K behaves quite differently than the original 280N or the LF280. So we're going to maybe learn about that and also then compare it to the 304. Uh, the 304's chemistry actually mimics very closely what the original 280 and the 280N was. So that'll be interesting to see. And uh, let's go ahead and start, first start our test using this uh, little uh, fan uh, charger tester and sort of see what we can uh, find out. All right. Hi, everyone. Awesome. What's on the funny kids? So today... We're testing another little charger that seems to be quite common. Uh, these little chargers uh, seem to be everywhere. And since it's another little device that people are going to be testing, uh, you know, cells with, we figure we'd let's, let's go ahead and get see what kind of results we have. Now, there's no V-Sense cables on this, but it only does 20 amps, so I think it'll be okay. And I think we were able to get it to go to 21.4 amps, so... We'll see what this thing does and what kind of results we get with it. And then we'll just, uh, you know, uh, come back to it and see, you know, what type of, uh, uh, you know, readings we get. All right. Thanks. All right. Well, something's kind of strange. Looked at the other settings for the volt and it's definitely off. We actually put our voltmeter here. We're seeing a reading of 3.32 volts, but this is 3.14. So, yeah, that's uh, here's what's gonna happen with this charger it's gonna overstate the amp hours, I think, way high because the nominal voltage of this one is gonna show up as 3.14, which is why. Well, we'll see. All right, so our test has finished. It's saying we're under 2.5. Oh, start it back up again. Let's see what we got. 283, but 874 watt hours. Hmm. High on the capacity, but low on the watt hours. All right, now we're testing the same battery that we test on the little charger on this, uh, uh, ZKE charger. So let's see what happens. It'll be interesting to see, compare the results. And yeah, and we'll see where we get. Okay, so we got the results and let's sort of see what, uh, what sort of results that we have. All right, so if we see this result, we can see the system said it had 276 amp hours but it had 896.02 watt hours. And this is what we're seeing with the 280K. It doesn't really matter what the labels are. They're all sort of like between 900 watt hours and 896 watt hours. Within like, if you do four or five cycles on this cell, they will settle at this watt hour range and they'll just stay there. And this is some strange thing that's that maybe... That's a characteristic of the K, but I will tell you, I've looked at other people's videos and I have seen their results and they all, I mean, everyone always says, man, the 280K is just exactly at 280. And I think that's just a part of their chemistry. We're going to, uh, but he, here's the thing to, to understand. This is 276 amp hours at 
3.25 volts, which the label, if you had seen our previous video, are normalized to 3.2. So if we normalize it to 3.2, we get almost exactly what the cell is. 280 amp hours times 3.2 volts nominal equals 896 watt hours. And I will tell you, it is, we've turned, you know, we have tried multiple 280Ks. You put about four or five cycles on them, they all come in around this and they just stay there. And I think that's just the characteristics of the chemistry of the 280K. All right, now let's look at a LF304 and see if we can find some differences between the chemistry of this cell and the chemistry of the uh, 280K cell. And um, I think the LF304 behaves just like the 280N or the original LF3, um, LF280. So I would say this is classic LFP prismatic characteristics. And uh, we're going to look at the chart and see what we find. But I think you'll find is it, this is very familiar to what we have. Um, let's see here. All right. So here we have the chart for the LF304. Uh, now, as you remember, it was normalized to 322 amp hours at uh, 3.2 volts. And we did a test. Now, according to the charger, uh, it's saying 317.7. But that is at, uh, you know, uh, 3.25. So let's actually get a little uh, breakdown going to make this a little easier to explain. All right. So if we sort of look at it, uh, we tested 317.7 times uh, 3.2 volt nominal which gave us 1031.76 watt hours now uh, as I explained and we have gone into depth on this whole thing so watch some of our previous videos if you want to figure out why we have to normalize this but if we normalize it 3.2 well we get almost exactly what the label said like 99.6 or 7 percent and this is sort of how the original EVE cells behave. They are going to follow the label very, very closely once you normalize them to 3.2. Uh, already, even if we did normalize the 3.25, we're actually above rated, you know, above the 304 capacity. But when we normalize it, we are very close. So I believe the 280K just, it's the chemistry is different. It's going to want to get to the two, to its, uh, you know, 280 amp hour, uh, slash 896 to 900 watt hour range. All right, so we've kind of done the test, and as you can see, it can be quite a difference based on what charger you're using. And depending on who the customer was, they could have gotten the same cell. One customer, if they were just looking at amp hours, could be jumping up and down. The other one could be yelling and screaming at us, saying, Oh, you guys ripped us off. But I think we need to sort of analyze. So one thing we found with the LF280K, this battery chemistry loves settling in around 896 to 809 to around 900 watt hours. And we see that consistently. Whatever sort of capacity that they have in here quickly fades to around the 280 uh, mark at 3.2 volts nominal. Um, it is not like the original 280Ns. It is not like the original LF280. This chemistry loves settling in and it's 280. And if you see other people's reviews and other people's videos, you'll always hear them comment the same thing. It just likes settling in at 280 amp hours at 3.2 volts or 896. And, you know, if we look at the label, we clearly see it is 896 watt hours. Now, when we tested this, this, this cell has had about five cycles on it so far. Okay. And I think in our test data, when we first tested it, we got around 277.8 um, at 3.25 volts, which is about 281, 282 amp hours at 3.2 volts. It's very important you normalize your results to 3.2 because that's what this capacity is. The capacity is not at 3.25. The capacity has been normalized at 3.2 volts. But as we started cycling it, it got closer and closer to 280, and it just kind of stayed there at 3.2 volts. So we tested on the little charger. That thing was saying, hey, 283, but 
876 watt hours. Then according to that, it's got more amp hours, less watt hours. But when we tested it on the ZKE, the ZKE correctly measured the watt hours at 896, but it also said 277 at 3 point, uh, 276 point something at 3.25 volts. So when we convert that back down to 3.2, we get exactly 280. And we, after testing a few of these, that's what we see. They all are coming in at 280 after you put a few cycles on them. And I believe it's just, just the way this chemistry is. Now, the 304, on the other hand, this behaves like the original 280Ns, the original LF280. It's the same type of chemistry. So if you like chasing those amps, you will want to get this one. We're seeing anywhere from 99 to 98.9% .9 exactly label match when corrected for 3.2 volts. So everyone's like, well, obviously, then why even bother 280K? Well, the 280K is an endurance battery. You're going to get more cycles out of this one. This is what you're going to be able to put, you know, twice the number of cycles on there. It's very stable chemistry, but it likes being where it wants to be. The 304 is more of a sort of a linear thing. You're definitely going to get a higher capacity in the beginning, but as the cell ages, you're going to start getting lesser and lesser capacity. But if you want to have a big grin on your face and you want to get as close to capacity, you'll definitely want to go with the 304. Um, it's going to give you those those high, high amp hours. So the next, we're just going to briefly talk about those the two chargers and see sort of what we think. All right. So... Let's just kind of go over what do we think. Now we have two of these, uh, I guess, hobby grade tester. And this is like a pro zoomer tester. Pretty good, but you do need to make some changes. In our case, as you can see, we have the lugs, the old alligator clips we just, you know, chopped off because they don't make good contact. So, you know, and some people will argue and disargue, but um, that's, that's the way that we wanted to set it up. Um, See, this is 8-gauge wire. It would have been really nice to have some nice 8-gauge wire here. We would have been uh, more comfortable running 40-amp tests with this. But I think overall, if people are debating, hey, should I get this or should I get this, I do have to say the ZK is probably worth the money. Um, I think you're going to get pretty close to, if you do some changes, keep it at 30 amps or below, I think you're going to get like 99% of what a professional uh, piece of equipment would be. This, mm, I would say maybe 97% to what a professional piece of equipment would be. Um, it's got some issues. It doesn't show you nominal voltage. I mean, it's good for a general device, but not really something that you'd want to, uh, you know, hang your hat on. If you just kind of want to say, hey, let me see what's going on. Not a bad device, but I wouldn't go around, you know, using this as something to, you know, if I was writing a research paper, I, this would not be the device that I would be using to say, hey, this is what I got. All right. So now let's talk about some professional devices. Now, you've seen some videos of ours using this. Now, this is a professional electronic load. And a lot of people say, well, you just like to throw that in, in our face. But I'll, I need to make sure you understand. What really defines a professional instrument is once you start adding Skippy in it or SCPI. Uh, it's a standard command for programmable instruments. So what that basically does is this thing has an Ethernet port in the, in the back and you can connect to it and get commands. Most of these so things will not have their software, so you, you got to write your own. So let's give you a preview of what we're doing because we want we want to be able to make some nice charts similar to the ZKE. And I'm just going to show you that next. So the screen might flicker, but this little program that uh, we're writing right now and we can send some standard skippy commands to it like you know measure current measure power you know and it can tell you what it is so this this is scpi and we're gonna have to make our own gui make our own software to to do this so uh you know we just kind of uh start off with uh something like this and uh you know this is sort of the output file so we're it's in development it's gonna be a little while before it's ready uh, but that really is what it is fine. And you, another thing you can do is you can connect to multiple machines. So uh, we could actually connect to like five machines and have five tests running simultaneously on one device. But that's really when you start getting into professional equipment, when you get into what we call Skippy compatible instruments. All right. So let's uh, let's wrap this video up. 
So it was uh, actually a lot of fun testing these two little chargers. Uh, well, one little, one medium-sized charger. Um, and I think both have their place. Um, the little heater fan charger is good to get a general idea. It's not going to give you precise measurements. And if you're using this to make your case, I probably would not go that route. Uh, now, it did say we had 283.49 amp hours, which, again, was not quite right. And the same thing for the watt hours, little low, again, not right. If I had to give a leeway, you know, plus or minus 5 amp hours and maybe plus or minus 20 watt hours. And if you keep that in mind, it'll be a decent way to get an idea. Now, on the other hand, the ZKE... That's a pretty decent little charger for the price, and we're starting to like it more and more. The only problem with it is the software doesn't have pro charge profiles, so um, it would be nice if in the graphing portion you could define what type of battery you have, so you could say LFP battery, and it would normalize the results for you uh, so that you see the correct capacity. Uh, as of now, if you simply go by what it measures and you don't convert your nominal voltage from 3.25 to 3.2, you will get a incorrect amp hour rating but it still will give you the right watt hour rating so even if you don't do that then you should not look at amp hours look at only watt hours but if you want to match the label convert your nominal voltage of 3.25 or whatever it may to 3.2 and then you can get the exact watt hours so the watt hours is always going to be correct on this machine the amp hours will depend if you did or did not do the um conversion from you know whatever your actual battery measure to to lfp standards which is 3.2 volts now if you look at the actual results well they're dead on and that speaks a lot to what the lf280k battery is it is very consistent and we talk to eve and they say they sell more of this battery than anything else so i think it makes sense because automotive companies want consistency more than want anything so the 280K has a very good ability to match exactly the rated capacity of the cell. And I think that's really what the, what they designed to, to do. Now, some people say, well, I mean, if I can get 280 with the, um, you know, with the grade B, why the heck would I ever pay for grade A? I want to remind people, we don't go around beating the capacity drum. If you want to see what grade A versus grade B is, you need to watch some of our videos. We clearly show you what happens under load. Grade A is defined by its ability to hold voltage while under heavy loads, whereas grade B, the voltage is going to start dropping dramatically under load. So that's really the major difference. Um, now, if you're not going to be pushing that much power, you know, potentially grade B could be option. But we don't know the degradation of that cell. Something is wrong with that cell. It should perform like a grade A, but since it doesn't, that's why it's called a grade B cell. And then it's, it's really, I guess, anybody's guess on how long they will or will not last. I mean, eventually time's going to, you know, let us know how that is. But, uh, yeah, to, to wrap this video up, overall, again, this was very fun, and we're going to be doing more tests. We're going to try out some shunts. We're going to try out some other consumer devices, see what kind of results we get, and hopefully that can give us a better idea of what to expect when people are testing with their own devices to see if they can match what we state or, or what we don't. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. This is Austin again for Sun Fun Kits, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.